With the release of Claude 3.5 Sonnet came numerous different use cases, one of them being data analysis. In this video, I'm going to give you the entire breakdown on how to do data analysis in Claude, from finding free data sets to use, all the way to creating interactive dashboards and visualizations with your data. This is going to be super powerful when it comes to learning, research, presentation, and overall, it's just a very powerful feature to know and understand. That way you always have it within your AI toolbox. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Drake Sirach, and I have a private AI Foundations community where I teach everything about artificial intelligence along with my partner slash brother, Carter. Now, this is super powerful. We have over 225 members and there's 14 online talking and learning about AI right now. We have people in here giving tips, sharing their opinions on AI. We have a classroom full of multiple different courses to get you started, get your foot in the door with different AI techniques like AI image generation, automation systems, large language models. And we even have a calendar where we have a bunch of different live calls in here from month to month. We have a list, you can join, talk. It's very open discussion, but it's one of the best places to learn AI. Not only do I think that, but many members in the community have loved it and have stayed for a couple months now. So if this interests you, I'll leave this in the description or the top end comment below. So if you wanna learn more, I'll leave that down there and you can check it out for yourself. So what are the different ways you can manipulate and use your data within Claude? Well, number one is you can ask basic questions. You can upload a CSV file, a text file, a PDF, and just have a conversation with Claude just as you would without your data. But this time it's very personal because you have all of your data uploaded to Claude. Number two is you can create bar graphs and you can create line graphs to view trends over time. Or you can see how things pair up against one another by overlaying these charts on top of one another. Number three, using Claude with your data allows you to view data spreads much easier and find outliers within your data. Number four is it allows for very smooth presentation and that allows for very interactive experiences with your data that you couldn't have built without Claude, at least not as quick. Now you might be confused by what I'm talking about, but I'm going to break it down in this video. I'm just going to make it very simple for you. That way it's step by step. You can just use the same prompts I use and follow along and get very good results with your data. But first we need to understand how do we get data? If we wanna practice, how do we find data sets to practice on or how do we create them? Well, I'm going to show you that now. Well, first you could go to a website like Kaggle to get free data sets. I am not affiliated with Kaggle in any way. This is just a website I like using whenever I wanna get some data sets to practice on. And they have all sorts of different categories. You can click into these things and actually download the file. Usually these come in the form of CSVs and you can see an example down below. They also have usage policies that I would make sure you're following correctly. But another way you could do that if you don't feel like going to this and downloading free data sets is you could just go to Claude and create a free data set. Now this can be mock data, this can be made with real data. I just like creating fake data sets that way I can practice and get the techniques under my belt. So you can use a prompt like create me a fake data set for X and X can be whatever you want the fake data set to be on. Let me just show you a quick example of what that might look like. So maybe I say create me a fake data set for ABC company and the number of subscriptions they have and social media posts per month over a 24 month period. This is just something that maybe I wanna create a data set around. Maybe I am in a similar position and I just want this to practice with. Then I say add some variation to the data. Don't make it all so linear. There can be ups and downs because a lot of the time if you ask it to create a fake data set of something like this, it will just make it go straight up the entire time. So you can add variations with just saying that in your prompt. Then you can send that off and it, what it's going to do is actually give you a CSV file that you can then download to your computer and use in practice while you follow along with me. So as you can see, it's generating all this for us now, which is very cool. 24 month period, certain amount of subscriptions, and also social media posts. Now what you can do is in the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see a download the file button. Once you click that, it will download to your computer. As you can see, that has downloaded to my computer just fine. And now we can head back and start a new chat with Claude. And this is where we can actually upload our data. If you wanna hit add content, you're going to be able to upload CSVs, PDFs, and other files like docs that you can talk with and have conversations with and view your data in all the aforementioned ways. So first we're just going to be asking basic questions to Claude about our data. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add this content by hitting this add content button. Then I'm going to go within my downloads and where it says ABC company data, that's that data set we just created and downloaded to our computer and Claude. I'm going to select that and hit open. 
And now this text file's in here. We can have conversations about it. We can ask questions about the data. So I could ask Claude a simple question. I could start off by just saying, what is being displayed within this data? If you wanna ask basic questions and you don't wanna do visualizations right now, you won't have to clean and prep your data for those visualizations as much as you would need to if you were using a larger data set or if you were trying to create more advanced visuals. So I can just send this off. If I'm asking questions, you can just ask questions. And after asking this question, it does very well. It says it appears to be monthly performance metrics for a company ABC company based on the file source name, and it shows this information, month. The month is sequential, ranging from one to 24, which could represent two years, subscriptions, and social media posts. You can keep on asking questions about this data. For instance, maybe I wanna say, what is the correlation between subscribers and social media posts? Maybe I want to see if ABC company, when they post more, do they get more subscribers or do they not? But let's see, it seems like they would, but maybe there's some correlation that doesn't match up or maybe they have no correlation at all. We can find that out by asking questions and talking to Claude about our data set that we just uploaded. I can send that off and get the correlation between them. And it's going very in depth. It's actually calculating correlation coefficient in order to do this correct, it seems like. And it gives me a result of 0 0.9977, which is extremely strong positive correlation between subscribers and social media posts. So it basically did like this math equation in order to see how close these things were tied together. Something that would have taken me a very long time to figure out even how to do that or how to find out if they're correlated. But using Claude, we can do this stuff very quickly. We can find correlations between certain things within our data. Why do certain numbers line up the way they do? And we can kind of make data-driven decisions based on Claude's conversation that we're having right now. That's how powerful this stuff is. It is quite amazing. Now let's generate some actual visuals with Claude. We have the basic questions down. We can start a new chat and let's actually learn a prompting technique that we can use because sometimes Claude is a little shaky, but if you use the prompts that I'm about to show you, which I'll leave in the description, then you should get some very good results. And it's very simple. You're just putting it in a role and defining some simple instructions, but sometimes it doesn't really come out the way you want it to if you don't do this. And I've learned that the hard way and I've had to do some research on how to get this right every single time. And of course, there's still some nuances and some things that I have to work around and talk to Claude about when it comes to uh, creating the visuals, but it does pretty good on the first go if using this prompt. The prompt goes like this. You are a chart creation expert. You take data and turn it into visually appealing graphs and diagrams in order to help users understand their data in a visual way. I'm going to change is to in. You use React and inline CSS styles to bring your data to life. So this last part is especially important. You need to mention to Claude to use React and inline CSS styles. Sometimes if you use Tailwind CSS styles, they won't actually appear properly on your screen within the artifacts feature. And so this is just what you want to put before you upload your data, before you give it a prompt and tell it what chart you want, because this is what's actually going to bring the chart to life in a more consistent way at least, because I've tried it without this prompt and it doesn't always work and I've always got a prompt multiple times and we wanna save our Claude message limit. So important to type this off first. Now I'm going to add my content and just upload that ABC company data that we've been working with. And I'm going to create a dual axis line graph so I can see the correlation with my own two eyes of social media posts and revenue. So I'll type out a prompt for that real quick. In that prompt, I just said, use the uploaded data to create a dual axis graph showcasing subscriptions and social media posts. Here are some steps to complete this. You need two Y axes, one showing social media post number on the right, the other on the left showing subscription count. Create a bar graph showcasing subscription count per month. This needs to be a soft yellow color. So I'm giving very specific things I want. Soft yellow color, a bar graph showing subscription count per month. I want to see bars based on the left Y axis showcasing the number of subscriptions over a 12 month period. And then I want a line graph overlaid on the bar graph. This will show the amount of social media posts per month. And this is going to be correlating to the right Y axis. You're going to see what I'm talking about in a second, but this step, I just want to be specific. And I want to try to pinpoint exactly what I want to Claude so it doesn't have to read my mind. And so that it can just say, okay, I know what he wants. Let me create it. And you might even want to put things at the end of your sentences like, do not skip this step. Sometimes it likes to skip that last step of overlaying the line graph. And we might even see that play out here. But remember, I've uploaded my company data, that CSV file, and then I'm just going to give it a send off command, create this dual axis graph and use only the first 12 months of I can say my data. 
And now we have this awesome prompt here. And keep in mind, this is just being used to generate a bar graph in this instance, overlaid on a line graph, or the other way around, a line graph overlaid on a bar graph. But you can use this to generate really any chart you want. And there are hundreds of different charts you can generate, especially when you start adding more factors in your data. Here we only have two factors, revenue and social media posts. And I guess we have the month as well, but that's not really a comparing factor. That's just something that's going to stay the same no matter what. We know which month is coming. So now I can send this off and we might need to revise this as we go. But the beauty is, is we took some time, we created an amazing prompt and it should do a decent job on the first trip. And if it doesn't, we can always edit it. A lot of the time it won't like to overlay that line graph. As you can see, it didn't overlay that line graph. So there is some tweaking, but it does have that soft yellow color as we said. And I can just tell Claude, you didn't put in the line graph. And I even told it to not skip that step. But sometimes you have to prompt like that. And that's fine because then it will just put in the line graph. It'll say, I apologize. And it's going to recreate that artifact for us. And as you can see, just like that, it put in the line graph. So there is definitely a tight correlation because it looks like social media posts and subscriptions are moving hand in hand. Seems like there's a general upward trend in each one. I really like hitting refresh and watching that animation, how the bars come up and that line goes across like that. That thing looks very, very nice. If you wanna present this in a way where you can show people and maybe you have a meeting coming up and you want to use some data and just get a quick chart generated, what you could do in that meeting or if you have colleagues that you wanna send some information to is you could hit publish in the bottom right hand corner, hit publish and copy link, and then once your link is copied, you could head over to Google or whatever browser you use and then paste it in. What that's going to do is give you a nice full screen view of this data. People can even remix this or you can view it in a full screen mode if you want to do a presentation type. You can hover over it, it's interactive, it goes over the month and it has both of those factors in there. And this was just from two prompts and me uploading my data set. Think about how powerful this could be with 10 or 12 prompts and a lot more data. So that's an example of how you would create charts and diagrams within Claude. You'd have to use that prompt, which I'm going to leave for you in the description below, so you can get it closer to right on the first time. Now, again, you're going to need to revise it. There's going to be things that come up, but that's just part of the process and part of using Claude right now for data analysis. Now, the next thing I wanna show you to do is how to talk to PDFs and how to create visual diagrams of PDFs and interactive dashboards, because this is something that I think is super powerful. And as you saw me do in last step, you have the ability to publish this and it's a very interactive experience experience with maybe your teammates or yourself, right? You can create custom quizzes based on PDFs for yourself and really learn like you weren't able to before Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So I'm going to get into that now. First, what I want to show you is this PDF that I have. And I think I have it downloaded. Yes, this PDF right here. It's a multimodal chain of thought reasoning and language models. And this is basically a prompting technique for large language models, multimodal chain of thought reasoning. And it kind of describes, you know, a lot in depth of how using multimodal chain of thought prompting helps the responses become more accurate. But it's 25 pages long. And it has so many different words and phrases in here and a lot of information that's pretty difficult to understand and keep in my mind. So I wanna put it in a dashboard in Claude. So just like anything else, just download it. Hit that little download button on your PDF and it's going to download to your computer, okay? I've already got it downloaded right here in my data sets folder, so I'm not going to do that again, but just download your PDF, head back over to Claude and hit add content. When you hit add content, what you can do is upload your any PDF really. I've seen people do this with PDFs that are 100 plus pages long. This one's just 25. I've personally done it with a 40 page PDF, but you can hit open. And now you can say, create me an interactive dashboard based on this PDF, okay? And this is where all the magic happens. That's all you have to say. Upload your PDF and say, create me an interactive dashboard based on this PDF. I think this falls into the data analysis category because there's data within PDFs and you can see your data in a more visually appealing way. You can interact with it and learn from it much better. You can ask it questions and you can do a lot of things within this interactive dashboard as you're about to see, it's quite amazing. And take a look at this interactive dashboard that was just created for us. I mean, this thing is absolutely amazing. We have different graphs in here and we even have different tabs we can click around like we're on our own website. It has nice comparisons based on data found within the PDF that we just looked at right here. It's taking in all these numbers 
and creating graphs based on it and showing us how certain things are comparing up against one another. We have certain percentages in here for different techniques and we can add on to this. This was from one single prompt, a single sentence, create me an interactive dashboard based on this PDF. I can add to this and I'm going to show you that right now. If in the bottom left hand corner, I type in a prompt, I can add pretty much whatever I want to this. If I want more text, I can say, make this interactive dashboard have more text. Add a summary tab where you describe the overall message of this PDF in a paragraph. Also add a quiz tab with a five question quiz based on the information from this PDF. This is how crazy you can get with this stuff. You can go really in depth. This is just going to be prompt number two. Imagine again, what this would be like with 10 props or 15 props, right? When you publish this, you have something that is so custom that you can send to people or just use yourself in order to view, learn, and interpret your information much, much better than before. And just like that, it just got done generating. It's explaining everything over here on the left, over by my head over here. And what it did was it added two tabs for me and it made it more text oriented. So it gave me a summary tab with the summary of the multimodal chain of thought reasoning PDF. And it goes in depth in one paragraph on what that PDF is going over. We have our performance tab and within each tab, it's also added more text, right? Cause I told it, I want more text. So now it's kind of explaining what the charts are showing in each category here. So in the ablation category, we have text and error analysis. We now have text. Very cool how it's describing this. And we even have a quiz tab now where it's going over a five question quiz. I can just take some random guesses if I want and I can hit submit quiz and it says you score a one out of five. But maybe now for my next prompt, I want to say, tell me the ones I got right. Tell me the ones I got wrong, right? And you can keep on adding to this thing. And when you're ready, and when you like it, if you ever want to, you have the ability to remember to publish this stuff. And this is just a different way to interact with your data. You don't only have to do this with a PDF, but you can add more content to this page. Think about throwing in, you know, a data set that is related to your PDF. You could do that and you could integrate it within these sections here. But if I paste this in here, we now have this public Claude artifact that people can go in here, they can go full screen mode, and it's basically a website they can work around based on all of your custom data or based on multiple pieces of data that you are studying or that you are interacting with. Now, there are so many things that you can do with data analysis in Claude, but I think this is overall a good starting point for you so that you have some things to work around, right? You have some things that you can work with. You now have the ability to create data sets and find data sets. You know how to create visuals like charts, graphs. You can interact with PDFs. You can mix all these things together. All the creativity and freedom lies in your hands. So I encourage you to try this out so you can add it to your AI toolkit. I absolutely love it. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like and subscribe. Friendly reminder, I do have that AI Foundations community in the description or the top pinned comment below. Over 225 members now. People are absolutely loving it and we're learning more than ever before. So I highly recommend you join that and be with us for the journey and for this AI revolution. All right, subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed. Comment below letting me know your thoughts. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video.